Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar organized by Doxity in partnership with uh, Humanitas University. Just bear with us with a couple for a couple of minutes until we uh, give everyone the opportunity to join. We um, are expecting so many people from so many different countries. So if you would like to write on the chat, which is uh, right here below in the Zoom menu, where you're coming from, we are really curious to know. So uh, just uh, as I said before, in a couple of minutes, we will have uh, our our panelists. We have today, we have Benedetta from the recruiting office at Humanitas University. And also we have Yad, who, who is an um, international student at in, in Humanitas University, who will tell us all about her experience studying medicine and surgery in Italy. So as I said before, bear with us for a couple of minutes until uh, we uh, have we have more people joining and we will start the presentation right away. My name is Lucia from Doxity and I'm honored to present this webinar organized in partnership with Humanitas University. The title today is Take the First Step for Your Medical Career by Applying to Humanitas University. And today in our panel, we will have Benedetta Arcolani, who is a junior marketing recruitment student, and also the testimonial of uh, Yad Jasmine uh, Erdmer, who is an international student of medicine and surgery at Humanitas University. So if you would like in the meantime to write on the chat where you're connecting from, we will be really curious to know uh, and to say hi to you. And also during the webinar, if some questions might come up, you can write them on the Q&A box right here below, and we will be happy to answer all of your questions at the end of the presentation. So now, uh, without further ado, I We'll leave the floor to our panelists. So um, let's welcome Benedetta Arcolani, junior marketing recruit recruiting students from Humanitas University, and also Yad Jasmine uh, Erdner, a medicine and surgery student from Germany. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I know how important it is to choose the right university. So as Lucia was saying, I'm Benedetta Arcolani. I work here at Humanitas University uh, with students. And today I will share with you a little bit about our uh, university. I will share also my screen with you. So, perfect. <laughs> You may already know Humanitas University as a school since you're here, but we really come from Humanitas Hospital, which is just has been reconfirmed as the best hospital in Italy for the second year running. And uh, in order to better understand us, I think it's very important to understand our history. To tell it, it will be a little bit long, so I will just show you a video. Thank you. 
as you could see from the video, we are a pretty young university. Nevertheless, we have come a very long way in such a short time. Um, in the last 10 years, we have become one of the best Italian universities in the medical field. So we are actually the second best and one of the best uh, European university. In order to keep up with this time for greatness, let's say, uh, there is really a mentality, a way of doing things. And you can see, can see it from our mission. So the clinical activities by the hospital and the research in the research center cannot go on alone. Of course, there are people who uh, take them in and uh, create new things, this, let's say. And um, in order to do so and to keep up with this, we need to educate new students that can um, take on this mission, this responsibility. So our uh, students get the chance to um, do their internship in the Humanitas hospitals, but also they have the chance to take on research in, the, um, in our research center. University, in fact, is in the same campus with both the, build, the hospital and the research buildings, which means that it's really easy for students to move between them. And I, I can say it's pretty useful too, but we will hear more about that by Yada. Our international degree courses are two. One is medicine surgery, which every year admits 140 European students and 50 non-European students. And the MedTech school, which is medicine and surgery plus biomedical engineering, still in six years. And uh, every year we welcome 70 uh, European students and 10 non-European students. And uh, we strongly believe in these international courses. In fact, as you can see from the map, 40% of our students are in fact um, from outside of Italy. Uh, you can see the countries here. And as you can see, they come from all over the world. Um, it's fantastic having a community so international in which culture are respected not only in uh, from students and by students but also in our professors so not all of our professors are Italian uh, many come from outside of Italy and we have also visiting professor that can share their experience all over the world this doesn't isn't only valid for uh, the six years but also afterwards because uh, while we accept students from all over, over the world, we are also accredited in many uh, countries, all of Europe, and then uh, countries such as UK, USA, Canada, India, Turkey, Switzerland, which means that after they get their degree, uh, students can go and practice, do their residency mostly, all uh, over the world. So it's pretty useful for them. But let's talk a little bit more about the medicine and surgery degree course features. At the end uh, of the six years, our students get um, a master's with the license to practice as a medical doctor, which means that they can uh, enter directly the residency or the program to become a general practitioner and um, they don't need to take uh, another exam. Before COVID in Italy, uh, it was necessary for a student to do a 70 month friendship before uh, having the chance of going into uh, the residency. Now, one of the few good things com that came from COVID is that it's no longer um, so. And these seven months are now integrated in the six year studies. As you can see, the first point on the board is integrated models, which means that, um, for example, our students won't study anatomy and chemistry, let's say, as two separate subjects, but as one. This is done because 
of course, in the human body, when you are in the hospital, you won't be able to separate these two subjects. Uh, you can just say, oh, uh, yeah, I didn't study chemistry really well, so no thank you. But uh, you will need to integrate them. So it's easier if you already if you're already used to this mentality instead of having to do so after uh, six years of just studying. The clinical activities that, as I said, are mostly in the mental hospital, but also with um, uh, other hospitals for the wards we don't have, such as pediatrics and geriatrics, are starting the third year. And there you will shadow the doctors in the different wards. So you won't be the one that uh, cures the, the patient. Because of course, you're still a student and you ha don't have yet the ability to do so. For our highly motivated students, there are research tracks, as I was saying, in the research center. Yeah, they will tell us about this too. and. Um, then for all of our students, there are practical activities with hands-on experience. So let's see. Um, this is done by three different approaches. So the first one is the words. As I was saying, we will shadow the doctors. Then uh, from the words, you will take the clinical cases. And by this, you will um, study them in a more safe and calm environment so you will take them back to the university uh, study a possible uh, course of cure or anything that can be useful for your learning but also for the patient and then you will simulate the cases in the simulation center where you will have the chance to be the lead doctor in a completely safe space in a month we strongly believe that while of course you cannot practice on patients right away while you're still a student, it would be not the best. You still need to practice. You're a doctor after these six years. You need to know what to do. So here you can see a little bit about our Maria Luzzato Simulation Center, which is the biggest in Europe. And we have three main areas. Uh, you can see here the high fidelity simulation rooms where we have high fidelity dummies, sorry for the repetition, that act just as patients. So you can see the um, where the doctors give the orders, let's say, to the patients that are called AL. And they can give them voice, but also reactions. So for example, you are simulating a case, you do something wrong, your patient has a heart attack. How do you react? It's your responsibility. So you need to make a choice and the choice has consequences. This is extremely important. You will someday be in the hospital making those choices. And if it's your first time, it can be really hard. And if you do something wrong and you never did anything at all, it can stop you for believing in yourself also. So it's important for the patient because of course, uh, if the patient here in the simulation center dies, we can just turn it on again. In the hospital, not so much, let's say. But it's also very important for the doctor that gets the chance to build on his confidence and his abilities. Then we have an anatomy lab where we use human cadavers. This is mostly for residents, so, uh, so that they can experiment on real skin, real organs, in the cube, where we have a low, medium, and operation, um, sorry, low and medium fidelity simulators and operation, operation simulation simulator. Uh, so surgeries and uh, technical stuff. Here the student can try on uh, different procedures and uh, get a hand on it, let's say. But how to get into Umaintas University? Because of course, um, 
there is a process for that too. So my advice in any case is to always look at the admission test because it can be different for the universities in which you want to go. Even if you just want to do medicine, it can be that different universities have different tests. For example, our test is different from the state exam present in Italy. It's called UMA test. It's based only on logics. So as you can see, 60 multiple choice questions in 120 minutes, 30 of which are scientific thinking, which means mathematical, procedural, and visual logics, and 30 are academic literacy, which uh, is um, scientific reading comprehension. This is because, uh, of course, what you learned in your um, previous studies is important, but at the same time, we want to see what you're capable of doing, not what you've already done. And um, this can tell us just that. Registration, as you can see, are open. And this year it will be the 2nd of Feb, sorry, next year will be the 2nd of February and the 8th of March. So, Right to date, because you will have two chances to participate in the test. Uh, this was just by uh, from last year, so um, it's a fairly new thing. But so, um, you can take on both exam, and we will only consider the best out of the two scores. If you are in your second to last year of high school, so mostly your third of, or fourth year, you can take the test in 2024 and then twice again in 2025. So you have four chances and you will only consider the best out of the four scores. Um, I just want to say that if you are in your second to last year, you will... Um, Sorry, you will um, probably not score at your best because, uh, of course, you, you still have a whole year of high school to go. You're not probably re ready yet. Then maybe you're the best and everything goes great and you're the first to take maximum points. But uh, we did this so that our students in their second to last year could really... Uh, try it without having to rush, let's say, because mostly it happens that students who are fairly prepared just get stuck by anxiety and it's a shame. So it's very useful. Uh, as you can see, there is a minimum point uh, you need to reach to be admitted to the ranking, which is 40 points. But then we only take on the best students in the rankings. So um, even if you have a 178, which is pretty high score, uh, but everyone else has a 169, the classification will count uh, those. So um, we also have some entry requirements. Mostly, you need, if you can see them on our website, I will share the link with you. But uh, if you mm, are from an ID, which is usually the case, um, you need to pass all classes and have at the end of 24 points, 12 of which need to be taken at a higher level and you need to complete the three main subjects. Okay, so uh, regarding fees and scholarships, for, um, I know you're not um, European students, but if you have a double citizenship, one of which is European, you would be considered as one. And in this case, the fees vary on the family income. 
uh, we consider the ESEP index, which is um, a university index, and we have four brackets of tuition fees. The lowest one going from 10,000 euros per year to the higher one going to 20,000 per year. The, um, for medicine, this year are there are seven full or partial scholarships available. So uh, full, they cover all the tuition fee, uh, while partial, they cover all but the 4,000 initial um, fee. They're assigned on the basis of both merit. So mostly the uh, ranking position in the UMAT test, which um, we consider the first 30 ranked in the UMAT test. And um, then we will look at your high school grade and your, for financial requirement, we mean your um, family income. The scholarships are granted for the entirety of the six years. So if you get them and you can keep up with the requirements, you will have them for the whole uh, duration of your studies. The requirements are that you do your exams in time and then you have an um, um, average of 27 in your exams. For non-European students, uh, the tuition fees are of, um, don't worry, they are um, 20,000 euros per year, and we have four partial scholarship available. So as um, oh, before, as before, partial scholarship means they cover all but the 4,000 um, initial uh, fee. They are still signed on the basis of merit, ranking position in high school grade, uh, but they won't be assigned on the basis on, of financial requirements. They're still granted for the entirety of the six year though. Now I will leave a uh, space for our students experience. Just before that, I would want to talk about uh, just two things that even not being a student, I can share with you. Um, we do have a student house. We have 270 rooms. My advice is if you want to get in, to first write, um, it's, um, sorry, it's organized by uh, an association which is called Camp Plus. And uh, you can find a, um, form to fill on our website in order to get all the um, information you may need. There are single or double rooms and uh, prices usually from seven to nine uh, thousand um, per year. Regarding this, um, it's best for uh, students medicine, medicine students because of since they are um, assigned on the basis of the first to apply and they are the first to take the test out of all uh, our um, other courses, they usually are the first to apply. We also offer international uh, services and projects. So we have the Erasmus Plus, which means you can go all uh, around the Schengen area and do a semester abroad and uh, um, then come back. <laughs> but we also offer travel grants, which means that students can present a project they did, they, they want to do, sorry. And um, if we deem it worthy, we will finance it. So for example, this year, 10 of our students went to um, an hospital in Madagascar Generico Medical Hospital, and uh, it was really useful for them because they get to have an experience in a diff in a totally different context. But uh, they can also be research projects. Two years ago, one of our students went to the University of Hawaii, 
for volunteering projects. For example, one of our students went to uh, Haiti doing her um, project. And uh, so th if the student really wants to do one of these projects, it can be really, really interesting. You get an experience um, of up to a month and uh, it not only it helps to your curriculum, but also uh, really, really gives you a sense of what medicine is, is outside in a different place. So yes, it can be really useful. And then as many of our students come from or want to go to the USA, we offer the USMLE preparation course. The USMLE is the residency exam for the, for the US, USA. And uh, it's a very hard process. So we want our students to be as prepared as they can be for every choice they could want to make. And um, so we prepared this course to get give them this chance. Now I will leave the floor to Yade. Okay. Hello, I'm a fifth year student, as I think previously introduced, and um, so I've been here since 2019. Um, I'm going to start talking about the academic side at the beginning, which was already covered by Benedetta, so I'm just going to say it again from the student perspective. So the first two preclinical years, you have um, full day lectures, basically, and um, are learning a lot. As she said before, we have integrated courses, so that lets you balance out a little bit the ones where you might be bad at and the ones where you might struggle a bit more and you can also help each other with that. So the students will usually come together and talk to each other and help each other out. Also because we come from lots of different backgrounds and lots of different academic backgrounds as well. So someone may have taken chemistry in the IB, for example, and someone else took biology and then you can talk to each other and help with that. We also have things like case discussions in later years. So we talk about different cases. And from the beginning on, we have something called PPP, which is priority presenting problem. And that's something that you do throughout all the years. So they'll be like, okay, let's talk about headache. And you will talk about the different things that can cause headache. And then you will actually revisit that later when you've actually learned about headache in neurology, for example, and you know a lot, a lot more about it. So it's very good about like thinking about the clinical part from the beginning. And it's also a lot of doctors who are the teachers here. I was at a different university before, so I had some experience. And um, because they're all doctors, or mostly, especially, of course, in the later years, they can help you more with, again, the practical experience and knowing how to apply the knowledge that you are learning. Um, and then when you get to the clinical part, so we talked about before, you then get hospital experiences. Those are integrated within sem the semester. It's also um, at the beginning, they take care of your Italian level. So if you speak a little less Italian, you'll be in the group going to the hospital later so that you can practice beforehand. Um, I'm not Italian. I'm actually German and um, my Italian was not good at the beginning. So um, I'll, I can assure you all that um, you learn it slowly. And especially in the hospital, it's okay, and you will learn it, and they will help you. And the patients are also super nice. Um, so then um, we have different hospitals, which allows you to also see different environments. So I think the one in Rizzano might be the biggest one, but we also got to see smaller hospitals. So for example, I got to see the obstetric ward there and attend some births, which I wouldn't be able to do here. And so that's really cool, and they're super nice as well. And so the um, transport for that is organized by the university as well. So that's all good. Um, then for that, we need support. So once the teachers, I really do like the teachers, they're generally very open to questions and you can talk to them. Um, we also have the counseling service, as you mentioned before, and actually one of the teachers, when I had a lot of exam anxiety, helped me and be like, hey, would you mind, like, we have the counseling service, it's open for you to visit if needed, and they kept checking in with me. So it's very personal care as well, which I think speaks for, like, the newness of the university as well, that they really care about the individual students. Uh, we also have student-led tutoring groups. They're organized by the university, so the university will be like, who can help? But then um, the students will help each other out. Usually it's like an upper year student helping the lower year. So that's very useful also to get to know upper year students. Generally, you can like talk to anyone, be like, which year are you in? Can you please help me? I need help with this. Or like, what do you do for that? 
and you'll generally find help. And they'll also keep telling you this if you come here. Um, and also we have um, feedback that's every year. So each year we'll fill out a form saying like, how was this course? How was that course? And they do actually take it into consideration, which is really nice. And that's also very helpful and to be listened to. Um, so I have actually seen or talked to other students where like, oh yeah, this has changed it's because we wrote it in the review. So I can assure you that you actually take that seriously. Um, there's also other academic opportunities, which we sort of talked about before regarding um, research or other things. So I'm actually more interested in the clinical part and I'm part of the honors track project, which started um, like beginning of fifth year and the fourth year. And that's the more clinical part. So for example, you can do, um, there's different honors tracks. Um, and so you can do one in surgery, for example, or I'm doing one in global health, which will also allow me to go abroad using the travel grant as well. So that will be used for research purposes. For example, I can go to Canada um, and study there at the university or for like three weeks and go there and do more research and sort of um, deepen my knowledge in that field. They also have opportunities before that. So for example, one of our teachers, I think in second year was from Finland. So we said that we have um, visiting professors and he was from Finland. He's like, if someone wants to come visit my lab, we have six spots and you can come by. And then those students went there and they also talked very highly of that experience and really enjoyed it there. Um, we also have the official research um, project, which is the Virgilio program that starts in fourth year and of third year, so earlier. I just talked to some students from that. They also like it. So you can actually like choose the areas of research that you're really interested in and then sort of um, modulate it for your own um, interests, which is quite good. And I know someone just went to like Harvard, for example, with mm -hmm. that program and did some research there. Um, so it's great opportunities that way. Then regarding the student life, um, so it's a really international community. I myself am coming from an IB program because I studied in Switzerland. And um, that was one of the striking factors here. I was like, oh, it's actually international people speak English with each other. And like people are from everywhere. Um, oftentimes other international programs will sort of have one big grouping of people and then it's difficult to get in, but that's not the case here. I do actually know that they do have a bit of a Brazilian community and they have a group chat and they will talk. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. very nice. Yeah, so if you, um, you will probably find other people from your country and if someone here is like, oh, you're from the same country, they will love to talk to you. So that's always very, very possible. Um, we also have different groups. So one, we have the event committee, which organizes parties and stuff. So the fun things. Um, and I think they're also in charge of like the um, sports events. And they, for example, just opened, I think, a soccer field. Yes, we have fun things too. Yes. Yeah. So they're expanding on that as well. And then I myself am part of the um, CISM, it's called. It's the Italian um, Union of uh, Medical Students. Um, and even though it's Italian, international students are more than welcome to participate. I'm an example of that. When I started, I did not speak Italian. It was fine. They really try to integrate you. Um, and with that, we can do lots of other projects. So we're doing stands and talks to educate people on topics that we really care about. It's a lot of like personal um, involvement as well. And then with that, we also have a research, no, sorry, an exchange program. So you can do a practical exchange going into hospitals or you can do a research exchange. So that's also possible through that. Lots of um, research opportunities and exchange opportunities available and people talk very highly of them. I've talked <laughs> to many. And um, so there's lots of things to do. And then the other big thing that I think you mentioned before is the proximity to the hospital. It is genuinely five minutes away. I right now like spend like a half my week in the hospital when I can and don't have lectures and it's completely possible they're super like willing to see you as well um because they know that it's a teaching hospital they're aware of it and so a lot of the teachers will um love to see you and welcome you with open arms especially if you're interested in the subject of course so um that was a big big factor for me which is a little more difficult in other um universities where like the hospital is like 20 minutes away yes yes so that's <laughs> so yes, just to uh, some things I maybe didn't say, the exam is online. That's a pretty important thing. Uh, since COVID, we have the technology, so you don't need to come to Italy for the exam. And we have a language lab. So, well, Italian people really like to speak. So if you have Italian friends, you probably will learn Italian in a pretty uh, short time. 
But at the same time, we understand that if you are not really understanding a little bit, or maybe this can be the case here, but speaking Spanish, it could be difficult to uh, get in the language, let's say. And um, so we do have a language lab. And um, yeah, um, I guess that's the course. Uh, it's the one thing for the international opportunities later afterwards, they actually do regular meetings oh, with yeah. people from different countries. I've attended one, I want to go to, back to Switzerland. And so I got a lot of info from there and they do really make sure to make that super international. Yes. And also with the student body, you can walk up to someone. So I've helped like six different people with their applications to Switzerland and just help each other out. And that's really great about this university because basically everybody's going in different places. So they're all aware of it. Yes, and I want to say you saw the numbers. The international courses are very small, uh, especially if you confront them with other universities. So we have 180 students for medicine and surgery, which means that, uh, yes, there are six years of that, but at the same time, you will mostly spend time with your year, year and you really, uh, form a community, that's what I saw. Uh, you will also uh, talk with students from other years and really it being so, let's say, small, we wanted that because it means in the hospital you will be followed, maybe not one-on-one, -on -one, but one on three by a, do a doctor, it means by the uh, professor, you will be really be followed. Uh, that's really useful. We we care about the student, not the number. Uh, we don't care to have one thousand students here and have them go and not have get the experience. Let's say we want them to really uh, get everything they can. Uh, when I was doing a fair, one high school student asked me. What do you want from your students? Really, we want them to be able to do everything they want. Um, so, for example, uh, many of our accreditations came from student ask, students asking us. Uh, they were like, "I want to really, I really, really want to go to Canada. Uh, please make it possible so that I don't have to take twenty thousand exams." Let's say so. For us, it's really, really important. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, I guess this is the presentation. I just want to share with you the our um, contacts. So if you have any question in, that we cannot answer now, you just write us, we will answer. Thank you uh, very much to Yad and Benedetta for this interesting presentation. So um, if you all agree, I'm going to copy now the mostly the email address on the chat, which is recruiting. At unimed.eu. At unimed.eu, because we know uh, many of our participants, they uh, join us uh, um, on their... Um, on their smartphone, so it will be easier maybe for yes. them to copy it with a tab uh, directly from the chat. So you will find it right there. Now we uh, can start. We already have some questions, but uh, to our participants, just um, rest assured that we still have some minutes, so uh, you're still in time to put all of your questions on the Q&A box, as we uh, invite you to do before. So um, we have quite a variety of questions here. Um, one says, I get, I guess this one is for Benedetta, but maybe uh, yeah, they can uh, integrate as well. Uh, hi, can you tell more about the possibility of being a lead doctor during the studies? Yes, um, yes, I, I think it's for both of us. Uh, I, I'm guessing they mean the simulation center, uh, being a, their oh, yeah. choices. So, um, if you have a real patient in front of you. Of course, you cannot be the one doing the choices. You don't have the experience. You didn't finish your studies. Uh, there's still a long way to go. In the simulation centers, the case is built for you. So it doesn't mean it's easier or it means you really get 
to um see your, to apply your knowledge the knowledge that you have and if you don't know something you get to try and learn from the experience so next time you will be like oh i did that and that was very wrong my patient died uh i won't let him die today yes uh it's it's funny when I see, see say it like this, and uh, they are usually nicer than that. So um, for yes, the students, yes. they don't usually let them die because that's a little traumatizing. I've had it happen. Yes, right now. at the same time, it's important. <laughs> yes, um, it's important because then you become a doctor, and it's impossible to do everything right. And even if you do everything right, uh, it can still happen. Something bad can still happen. You need to learn that too. So when I talk about simulation, I usually make people laugh because it's still a little bit funny maybe and um at the same time i see students going outside the simulation rooms after they're done and they're crawling out it's really hard but they're awesome so i did the last year we had simulations so the last two semesters and the sort of our favorite parts of the um, practical experiences because they're so important and we usually do it wrong even things that we know super well i messed up in my like the own field i'm interested in and then i'm like oh okay so next time i do not miss that because in the hospital usually you can't stand there and be like please doctor wait i need to figure it out myself Mm -hmm. And so in the hospital, you're there as an observer, depending on the mentor you have. So my one does send me around to patients. I will ask questions. She will hide the diagnosis from me, be like, yeah, what do you think it is? Yes. So you have that opportunity. But actually figuring out from the beginning, you can't often do because the patient needs that care. And that is the best opportunity in the simulation center. And also the um, teachers there, they're, right now, I think we have two teachers. They're both doctors. One I know is an anesthesiologist who works in the ICU a lot, so they're super prepared for all these things and also have really interesting and great cases um, that teach you a lot. And you really get to practice that way, which is awesome. Yes, we also have actors that do the, yes. both the patients and the family. So it means that in highly stressful situation, you need to act. Uh, if you uh, are doing pediatrics, 50-year argument, you will in, uh, do it soon, I, I guess. And um, you have the mother of the child screaming in your ear and be like, save my child, save my child. And you're scared. You still need to act. You need to learn that. So it's really useful. That's really important because also uh, being a doctor is not only about uh, healing a body, but also interacting with people and their emotions in a different different situations yeah. that's actually uh, quite, quite uh, really interesting. Thank you. But yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, in the first years, usually there is a little bit of bedside manners uh, in the simulation center, yeah. uh, which means you're not doing the cases. You're in your first year. You don't know anything. Basically, you're still learning everything. And uh, But being a doctor doesn't just mean cure the patient. It means also be with the patient. Um, if you want to go into oncology, for example, uh, chances are you won't be able uh, to cure your patient every time. You still need to be there for them. We do have a course for that as well, where we actually practice that and the teacher will pretend to be it. And so um, they do prepare for that, which is really important. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, really uh, complete answer. Uh, we have some more questions over here. How can I get the certificate? Um, as I said before on the chat, uh, at the end of the Q&A session, we will send you the instructions to obtain the certificate of attendance. So stay tuned uh, while we go through with the this uh, Q&A session. Uh, do not miss this uh, really important possibility of asking how is it like to study as a doctor and a surgeon at Humanitas University. We have here a student, an international student who's currently living and studying in Italy and also um, Benedetta from recruiting, uh, who can tell you also about the um, bureaucratic procedures. So we have here a question, is there accommodation for international students or does each person have to find accommodation outside campus? Yes, uh, so as I was saying, we have the student house, but it's, uh, let's say, only uh, 270 rooms, um, which is not such a problem because usually students that want to stay there stay there for one or maybe two years, not more, because then, uh, as I said, it's a community. You would probably uh, prefer to um, 
go live with your friends. And um, we are outside, just uh, just right outside of Milan. And but uh, right next to us, there is a very pretty, very residential uh, little town, which uh, it, before us was for families. Now it's basically just students everywhere. So and I will uh, say a lot of students even before like the first year they will already move in together yeah. use Facebook that is the main um, method I think of um, finding others I think they often first ask in the humanitas Facebook group and then they will be led to other groups so that is very useful I know almost no international students who like moved out alone because it's scary um, but so they moved in with other international students I myself still live at the campus student house. So that is also the possibility, but um, the university usually, I hope they still do this, they open a WhatsApp group beforehand Yes. when you get in. So that way you can already connect with people and be like, hey guys, I'm looking for flatmates. And that's how you find each other and find flatmates beforehand. Mm-hmm. And um, so that way you do not have to worry about the accommodation. Everybody finds a place and it's um, quite community. Yes. Like, Thank you. Uh, do, you yeah, they, to... uh, do you want to, I mean, if it's not a lot to ask, tell us about your experience re- regarding accommodation. Did you stay in campus for a while or you went directly? Uh, maybe you you have just said it. Uh, you you looked on Facebook beforehand uh, on an apartment to share with other students. How was your I stayed in campus the entire time. Ah, I'm still okay. there. Um, but One of the exception, I think. Yes, <laughs> I am the exception that I stayed here. Um, and then I also checked um, on Facebook for other apartments beforehand, and I've helped like other people through that as well. And um, yeah, at the beginning, the WhatsApp group chat is the best. And then also afterwards, they will help you get to Facebook and find the right groups um, because it's heavily Italian, but people will help with that. Yes, yes. And yeah. Um... For those who are like, oh, I want to live in the city, I need to live in the city, uh, we don't uh, advise it because uh, it's still it's some it's forty minutes at least. Uh, with the buses, it's twenty minutes if you have a car, but um, you can still do it. Uh, so I, I know some students who live in Milan. There are quite a few. It's maybe not the best, but you still can. Most people live in the middle. It's something called Piazza Beata Grasso. That way yes. you just take a metro to the city. That's like 15 minutes. Yes. Or you take a bus to university. That's 15 minutes. So it's perfect. Yes. Yes. That's um, a pretty good solution. Uh, just for bureaucratic things, we have an office for that. So uh, students coming in, but also going out are, uh, after the six years, we add them. We have an alumni office, uh, and an international student's office. So we really care about our students before in and after so i, I know the alumni uh, i do the before uh, but i know the alumni stays in contact for years even they want really want to know how you're doing if you're doing everything right if you need help so we keep in touch okay thank you uh thank you very much for this information we have uh here a question maybe is a uh, situation a little bit specific uh, i think it's a little bit personal so maybe uh here our participant can uh, go ahead and write an email to our uh, request an appointment but uh if there's something uh, that we could say about this that could uh be interesting for everyone i will read the question out loud Hi, everyone. Um, If I am Colombian and I want to apply for a scholarship, I would like to know if I need to have the certificate grades and national knowledge uh, classification exam, because I don't know if I have more opportunities since my high school, uh, I got the best uh, grades and I was the first in my class in the final report. I also got a 92 out of 100 in the state test. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Then, by the way, I'm 16 years old. So if we want to review a little bit the requirements to uh, to apply for a non-European student. Yes. Um, so uh, one of the requirements um, is you have to be 18 years old when you are in Italy, if you are non-European. So if you apply and you are 17 years old, it's okay uh, as long as you're uh, 18 years old by August on the year you uh, you get in Italy. Um. For scholarships, we uh, the first cons- thing we consider is your uh, position on the UMAT ranking test. So we will see that, and then we will uh, further 
a check on your grades. So yes, we need to see your grades from high school. We uh, check the last uh, two or three years, depending on what kind of high school. So if, if it is a four years high school, we will check the last two years grade. And if it's a five years high school, we will check the last three years. And um, so that's what we will check. And the grade with which you um, finished your high school. So that's what we check. Okay, understood. Thank you uh, very much about it. Yes, we did have another question about scholarships. We was answered also during uh, during this answer. Um, here it says, uh, hi Jade, is it difficult? I'm sorry, yeah. Is it difficult to study in Italy as an international student? Um, no, it's actually okay. So again, as so I should say, I was in Hungary before, which is a um, very difficult language, I would say. And the Italians are super accepting of people just trying to speak their language. They will usually try and figure it out. The nicest people I've met so far are the ones who only speak Italian because like, I don't know English, you don't know Italian, we'll try to do it together. Um, the university has language courses from the beginning, at least for me, they were mandatory um, the first like two or three years. So you do learn that way. It's okay, it's not too much. Um, you could do it during studies. And um, yeah, it's really integrated. Also, I should say like around half the students are Italian and then around half the students are international. Yeah, 40%, 40% are international yeah. and 60% are Italian. That's how I would see as well. Yeah. So then you can talk to Italians as well. They'll be super willing to help you out. Um, and it's the university also is quite aware of it and they will try and help you the best they can. Um, again, I struggle with languages and I struggle with Italian and I still did absolutely fine. So far, I've always been able to talk to patients and to people and even like out and about, it's usually okay. Um, yeah, I think Italy is one of the best countries to study in internationally if you don't know the language, especially if you come from like a Roman language background that makes yes. it easier. Uh, as an Italian, uh, I can say we are really like um, people trying to speak, speak Italian. Um, we know we may not be the best usually of speaking English, so but at the same time now, uh, in the, the hospital is an international hospital, so uh, there you you will find a lot of English. Um, at the same time, we really want to help you. Just speaking as the country, chances are uh, we will probably just take our phone and Google Translate if. We cannot understand. Or grab an Italian, usually we'll have a yes. student next oh, to me. Yeah. Like, please yes. <laughs> answer the yes. phone call. Yes. I see. So um yeah, then what if you were uh to say also because you you spoke very fondly of uh Italy and the Italians, but if you were to find the the cons, let's say, of uh Italy and the Italians, I'm pretty sure Benedetta is not going to get offended by this. Uh, what could you say that maybe the, the uh, apart from the learning the language, the difficult things or the differences uh, as a cultural shock that you found uh, in Italy? So I'm German, so the punctuality is a big thing for me. Um, <laughs> so I used, I used to be there like five minutes early and be waiting there for like 20 minutes. Um, but um, that, that depends on the person, of course. Um, bureaucracy wise I think people talk about that quite a bit um, I found it okay especially at the university it's totally fine outside it can sometimes be a bit difficult but the university helps with that because they are aware um, and do that I thankfully as an EU student didn't have to struggle with it as much the other thing is um, oftentimes there'll be rules especially during COVID for example and I was there with like all my papers and no one really checked because they're like no we trust you you do your thing I'm like oh okay so it's actually, yeah, I don't know if that's a con. It was actually a bit calming for me, but it was a bit odd for me um, as a German person. But other than that, I think it was all right. Um, yeah, I mean, learning a language is always a bit difficult. Um, but other than that, I think it is a supportive place in that regard. Yes. Well, uh, I, yeah. I'm sorry, if I might add, uh, as a Latin American uh, living in Italy, it's uh, pretty much easy to learn Italian if your mother tongue is Spanish. Maybe also Portuguese, because we also have Brazilians today in our audience, uh, a little less maybe, uh, it's a little bit further uh, from the Italian respect to the to the Spanish language, but from Spanish is actually uh, quite uh, quite easy, I might add. I'm sorry, Benedetta, I interrupted you. 
Sorry? No, yeah. Um, regarding, uh, you make, uh, I have had a little laugh regarding punctuality because we have what's called academic 15 minutes. So the first 15 minutes are maybe I will be there, uh, maybe not. Uh, the actual hour I will surely be there is 15 minutes after I told you. Okay, so, so consider yeah, uh, when getting an appointment, 15 minutes of a grace period, let's say. Yes, the first yes, it's take. a grace period, yeah. So. Usually the teachers are on time, by the way. Usually uh, yeah. the students are there later, so... Okay, um, <laughs> okay, okay yeah. so that's okay. it. And uh, regarding the Italian language, since we are on the subject, uh, the courses, uh, the courses we are promoting from uh, Humanities University are fully in English, but uh, if a student is interested in learning Italian, uh, do you offer uh, Italian language courses so you can, or you can uh, send students, uh, I mean, you can tell them where, where to go to learn Italian? No, we have Italian courses inside the okay. university because um, well, that's a pretty big thing. Uh, in the hospital, um, not everyone speaks English, like the 80 years old uh, lady uh, coming for her it maybe doesn't speak English. And so you will need to at least understand Italian. So, uh, but as you did the courses, we didn't have any problems with that. Yes, also because uh, the Milan area is a very uh, rich, very important area in Italy and also the the, the um, countries nearby. So uh, you might get a lot of patients coming right from the profound south yes. in Italy, yes. uh, profound south in Italy to uh, to see a doctor uh, at the Humanitas Hospital, of course. So yes, uh, as I was saying, Humanitas is for the second year uh, running the best hospital in Italy, mm -hmm. uh, one of the most technological technological in Europe as well. So yes. yes, we have a lot of patients coming from outside. It can be from other parts of Italy. Yes. Sometimes it's quite even, a lot. Yes. Also no one really speaks another language when they're sick. That is yes. a big uh, thing. Yes. Um, but big thing. yeah they have Italian courses here and then also I do would recommend actually if you were able to get um, language courses in your home country before you come here because it's a lot easier to learn the language from someone who understands where you're coming from because they understand the mistakes you're making yes. um, but if you don't that's totally okay yes. I think 90% of the international students don't do that before and they learn it here and again even if you're there in like 30 and you're like I don't know you learn in the hospital super yes, we, learn. we didn't have any problems with that which was uh, what we were scared about as um, from the perspective of the university, I'm speaking from, from that, and we were quite worried about that. Uh, like you go into the hospital, you do your practice, and what if you still don't know Italian? It really wasn't a problem. By the third year, just by making sometimes just by making Italian friends, you, you know enough Italian. And then again, uh, as she was saying, nobody speaks another language when they're sick. Uh, they don't even speak in Italian when they're sick. So, yeah. I... <laughs> you manage, it's okay. <laughs> yes. I see. I see. Uh, yeah, I think that's very important. That's a, a thing that you will uh, you will manage to to overcome. So, um, here we have one last question that says, I want to know if I have to move to Italy for the admission exam and scholarship application. No. Uh, it's fully online so uh, as I was saying uh, you will be able to do it from home you don't need to come uh, to Italy at all um, by registering to the test you will choose one of two sessions on uh, February the 2nd it will be for us in uh, CAT time it could be morning or afternoon the same for the 8th of March and um you can choose which one is the best for your time zone. Okay, so, yeah. this is great. This is great. So I don't see uh, any more questions on our Q&A box, but I remember that we have put the, the email address of the recruiting office at uh, Unimed, and uh, you will be able to send an email there to get maybe a personal appointment to review your specific case. There's a lot of bureaucracy, and of course, uh, each one of you comes from different countries, from different schools, so uh, there are a lot of things to consider. If I may give you an advice as a former international student, also always uh, to um, act in advance is always um, 
something you may you may do to start asking about the requirements, preparing your paperwork, organizing uh, your plans is always uh, is always really important. So also, um, as I promised, um, I'm going to send you right now on the chat. The instructions to obtain the certificate of attendance issued by Doxity is just a brief uh, survey that, well, as soon as you finish it, um, you will receive the certificate in your inbox. So now, um, Benedetta and uh, Yade, I invite you to leave a final message to our uh, prospective students for to encourage them to um, apply for Humanities University. I mean, as a student, I would <laughs> recommend it. I think that was clear from my testimony so far. And um, generally, you will be welcomed here with open arms. So, and I will wish you all the best of luck. Yeah, I, I want to say, uh, as a university, if you to now I sound like advertising, but uh, if we really care about the student, we really want what's best for them. We don't want to force them into a path. And that's what's important for us. We really want you to get uh, your full choices. And here you can experiment with them, which I guess it's really important as a student. So if you're interested in that and in choosing while still having lots of chances, I guess this is the right place uh, for you. Okay, thank you very much, Yade and Benedetta, for your time and for all the precious information and for answering the question from our participants. Thank you to uh, everyone who participated today, especially to the ones who stayed until the end. Uh, my name is Lucia. It was a pleasure to introduce this webinar organized in partnership with Humanitas University in Italy, and we hope to see you again in the next uh, online free webinars. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Bye.